This morning, um, we're going to continue our 23 and Me series, uh, which is really a program. Like, it's not just uh, messages, it's also a program. And it's a program meant to jumpstart your pursuit of purpose in 2023. And so we've now gone through three weeks, one, two, three, yes, three weeks of 2023. And the question that you and I have to ask ourselves is, how have you used those three weeks to inch closer to your calling, right? How have you used those three weeks to actually move closer to your purpose? Because last week we went on to explain and sort of dive into the fact that, you know, you weren't born because you were chosen. You were chosen by God, and then you were born to act out his purpose and the dream for your life. So you are actually um, an actualization or a personification of God's dream. And through this series, we're following the life of a man named Joseph, who, you know, as we've learned over the last few weeks, had a dream and saw himself as a leader. You know, this dream was revealed to him, and he told his 12 brothers that, look, I've had this dream, which really has revealed that I'm a leader. I'm somebody to be followed. And when he revealed that dream to his brothers, the Bible says that they hated him. And he had another dream, which was about the same thing, and he told it to his brothers again. And the Bible says that they hated him all the more. And because they hated him so much, they decide to kill him, kidnap him, they um, put him in a pit, they sell him into slavery, and we find Joseph has been transported to ancient Egypt, and this is where we pick up the story in Genesis chapter 39, verse 7. And I'm going to read uh, quite a section because it really sets the deck for what uh, we are going to discuss this morning, which I think is pretty crucial. So Joseph 39, verse 7, the Bible says, Now Joseph was well-built and handsome, like many of the, the guys here, well-built and handsome. Amen. And, yeah, I'm talking about you, Joel, yeah. And after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, Come and lay with me. But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I. So I want you to just take a mental note of that, that he says no one in this house is greater than I. So in some way, Joseph has actually accomplished his dream, right? He says that no one in this house is greater than I. My master has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to lay with her or even to be around her. One day he went into the house to attend his duties, and none of the household servants were inside. She caught him by his cloak and said, Come and lay with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. Thank God for men like Joseph. When she saw that he had left his cloak in her hand and run out of the house, she called her household servants and said, Look, she said to them, This Hebrew has been brought to make sport of us. He came in here to lie with me, but I screamed. When he heard me scream for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. She kept his cloak beside her, until his master came home. Then she told him this story. The Hebrew slave you've brought to us came to make sport of me. But as soon as I screamed for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. When his master heard the story his wife told him, saying, this is how your slave treated me, he burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's Prisoners were confined. Thank you, God, for the scripture reading. Family, this morning, I've decided to code name this message, I didn't ask for this. Because sometimes it may seem to us 
that God is actually giving us the exact opposite of what we've asked for, right? Instead of fame, obscurity. Instead of power, weakness. Instead of relationship, loneliness. Instead of money, empty pockets. And I'm sure that Joseph must have felt the same way. Because like you and I, Joseph believes that God has given him a dream and a purpose. So he does the right things. Even in the face of family betrayal, Joseph does the right thing. Even in the face of forced service in Potiphar's house, Joseph does the right thing. Even in the face of temptation, Joseph does the right thing. And what is his reward for doing the right thing? Joseph ends up in prison. Joseph is carrying a dream he didn't create, and he's living a nightmare that he didn't cause, all because he does the right thing. And I want to know, is there anyone who's had a similar experience where you do the right thing, but you seem to get the wrong result? Right? And I think we have to come to the realization that when God allows us to experience an uncomfortable season, it is not because you are a bad person. As a matter of fact, when you read the story of Joseph, we see that Joseph actually had a better character than those who were around him. And if you look around your own life, you may look at the people who surround you and you may recognize, I'm not saying you hang around with vandals and I'm not saying you hang around with thugs, but what I am saying is you may look around at the people who are surrounding your life and you may say to yourself, wait a second, God, I have a better character than them. I am serving you more than them. I'm pushing myself for you more than them. Why are you leaving them alone to do what it is they want to do and you are putting me through the gears? Right? You could be asking, I think we've all asked this God, God this question. Why is it, God, that I am doing everything I can do? I'm doing my offering. I'm coming to church. I'm praying. I'm doing everything I possibly can. Meanwhile, you see people out there, you know they haven't prayed in the last 10 years. The last time they visited a church was when they were a child. They're not doing anything to support God's work. And you see God seems to be letting them get away scot-free. Meanwhile, you do the right thing and seem to end up in the wrong situation. Let me tell you something. Joseph was a person of character, and so are you. And I believe that. So are you. And one of the things I think that we have to keep in mind is that your calling will put a demand on your character. Are you with me? Your calling is going to put a demand on your character. And the greater your calling, the greater the demand on your character. The greater your calling, the more things you are going to go through. The greater your calling, the heavier the weight that God will put on you. But I'm here to tell you that if you can maintain your character throughout these seasons, that the calling that God has placed on your life will indeed come to pass. And the things that you have to experience in a difficult season will be forgotten when you enter into your calling and into your purpose. Is somebody hearing what I am saying? We serve a God who is faithful and who is true, and if you stand with him, he will stand with you. If you stand with him, he'll stand with you. This is the God we're serving. And we have to keep it in mind because the development of character is made through adversity, right? Right? You do not develop character in good seasons. You develop character in tough seasons. You don't develop character when everything is going fine. You develop character when things are tough. Look, you don't develop character when uh, you've got more than plenty. You develop your real character when you don't have enough. Has somebody been where I've been in life and has come to understand these lessons? Right? It's adversity and tough times that build character. It's adversity and tough times that build relationships. See, everything is okay. Look, honeymoons are beautiful. Amen and thank you, Jesus. But your marriage won't be a honeymoon. 
all the time. Oh, somebody said, okay, wait a second. Let me just bring it back. <laughs> honeymoons are beautiful, right? But your relationship won't be a honeymoon every day. And so the way that two people get closer is not when things are perfect. People get closer when things are tough because that's when you are going to find out, can I rely on this person or not? Will this person stand by me or not? And I think you should thank God if there are people in your life who will stand by you when things are not good, when things are tough, when you don't have enough, when you cannot supply. That is when you find out who people are. And that is when you find out who you are, right? Difficult circumstance will make you find out who you are. And the truth is you need to know because most of us actually don't know who we are and we don't know what we're capable of. And in many cases, we don't know where we stand until we're confronted with an issue, right? And it's really time for us to stop putting our minds on what God is putting us through and begin to ask, why is he putting us through this? God does not do things for no reason. God is a God of purpose. That is number one. So if you are going through something that's been brought to your life by God, there is a reason for it. And you and I are supposed to discover what that reason is. God, why am I going through this? Why are you putting me through this? Why have you placed me here? And we have to really be careful that we don't compare ourselves to other people and we don't say to ourselves, well, this person didn't have to go through this, God, so why do I have to go through this? The reason you have to go through things that other people may not have to go through is because your calling is different. Your purpose is different. And the demands on your life will be different, but the success and achievement in your life will also be different. Can I get an amen? It will be different. So we're different. And we have to understand what God is doing with your life is customized for you. You won't go through what I go through, and I won't go through what you go through, but at the end of the day, we're both going to accomplish our purpose. Because God, yeah, because God has already customized us. Amen. Every dream that God has attached to your life has prophetic implications. And for those who have been Ah, what can I say? Incorrectly taught that prophecy is all about the future, right? So anytime that somebody talks about something prophetic, and I know, you know, it gets deep. This is, you know, the word prophetic for some is a joy, for some is a terror, because it means that, oh, we're getting deep into things when you talk about prophetic things. And some people, I think, have been incorrectly taught that everything prophetic is about the future, Right? So when somebody says, I'm a prophet, or something like that, you're expecting that they're going to be talking to you about the future. I see this. I see that. God means this. God means that. But I'm here to tell you that biblical prophetic ministry does not just give you insight into the future. It should also interpret your present. What is going on with you now? Prophetic ministry is supposed to give clarity into your current season. That is what prophetic ministry, that's an aspect of it, right? And I, I know that some of us may be asking God, like, God, how much are you actually going to put me through? Isn't it enough? God, how much humility do I need? Haven't you put me through enough things to, to make me humble enough? How much more do you, haven't you ever reached a point with God where you're just like, God, how much more do you need to do to me? Oh, I'm by myself there? Okay, wait for 2023 because God will reach you. Hallelujah. Haven't you ever reached a point where you're just like, God, when is enough enough? I've, I've, God, you've put me through this and I'm humble. I get it. God, you've put me through this season of waiting uh, in isolation. I get it. And you, you, you ask God, God, isn't enough enough? Haven't you put me through enough? Haven't I been through enough? And it's, it's interesting because we can really get fed up and we can really get discouraged when we enter those types of seasons, right? 
Because you can tell God, God, I feel broken enough. You've broken me down, right? I've been through enough. And God's like, it's not because you're bad that I'm doing this. It's because your calling is so great. So I may have to break you down to a level that those around you have not experienced. But we are serving a God that if he breaks you down, he will build you back up. And the more he breaks you down, the more he'll build you up. This is the, 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 the righteous king that we're serving. And the, we have to really come to grips with this. Because if we don't, we'll think we're being punished for certain things that actually have nothing to do with what's going on. And oftentimes, you know, if you go to somebody who really is spiritually immature, you'll say, I'm going through this, I'm going through that. And they'll say, well, it's because you did this. You know, years ago you did this, uh, months ago you did this, uh, uh, your parents did this, your grandfather did this, you're this and this and this. Sometimes it's got nothing to do with those things. Sometimes God is putting you in a situation because he knows that's the exact situation that is going to grow you to the level that you need to get to. It's going to make you become the person that you need to become in order to carry the purpose he's attached to your life. And so we should be people who run towards the challenge and not away from it. And we should be people who run towards God and not away from him. And I know in 2021, 20, 22, 20, people were really frightened and scared about what was happening in this world. And some ran towards God and some ran away from God. But I'm here to tell you, in 2023, you and I are running full steam ahead towards the almighty God and whatever plan he has for us. We're going to run full steam ahead because there's a purpose and there's a dream that you need to accomplish in 2023. And it is not waiting for a another time. Do you know that your life is time sensitive? Do you know that? Your life is time sensitive. My life is time sensitive. And, you know, I've made the internal agreement with myself that in 2023, if anybody is here to waste my time, they are going to get the boots. Amen. And I think you had better make that divine confession to yourself because life is time sensitive. We all have a limited amount of time, which makes time the most valuable commodity on the face of this planet Earth. So you have to use your time in 2023 the way that God intends for you to use it. And something good has to come out of this year. This is a year of accomplishment. And if people don't want to accomplish, you got to move to the side. You just got to move them out of the way. 2023 is a year that God is going to fulfill his word concerning your life. And if people reject that word or don't understand it or don't want you to fulfill it, this is the time you got to make a move. In February, we're going to be discussing relationships and how to build your tribe, your network, your circle, and who you need in it. And this is such crucial information because whoever you give your time to, you give your life to. Whoever you give your time to, you're giving your life to. And so I think it's a, it, an imperative question that you and I have to ask ourselves. Who are we giving our lives to, right? Are we giving our lives to people who believe in us? Or are we giving our lives to people who think time is meant to be wasted? Are we giving our lives to people who share our love of God and the purpose he's placed in our life? Or are we giving our lives to people who think life is random and life is reckless? If you are walking with people who think that life is random and reckless, I want you to be really careful because they are going to be random and reckless with your life. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray that he connects you with people who believe in you. I pray that he connects you with people who will elevate you. I pray that he connects you with people you can trust and people you can love and people you can honor Honor and people you can be honest with and transparent with and people who will help you accomplish your dream in 2023. These are the people we need in our lives, right? And so we find that Joseph, 
our man Joseph, who we've been studying for the last few weeks, you remember that Joseph told his brothers about this dream. And when his brothers heard about the dream, they literally take him out to a field to kill him. I don't know how many of you have brothers and sisters. Sometimes the relationship gets rocky, but I've never had my sister say, look, uh, John, we're going to take you out to a field, and you are not coming back from this field. That is some reckless behavior, all right? And I don't know if you've done that to your own siblings, but if you have, don't tell me. Tell the police, because I don't want no part of it. So there's a pit. Uh, there's Joseph and his brothers, and they say, let's take him out to a field and kill him. And then one of his brothers says, no, don't kill him. Let's just put him into a pit. And the Bible is full of all these lessons that if we really listen to the Holy Spirit, we'll get it. And so they decide, let's throw him into a pit. Instead, they say, let's throw him into this pit. And the one who says, let's throw him into the pit is named Judah. And the name Judah actually means praise. And some of us can take a lesson from even that little section of the scripture. Because for some of us, whenever any inconvenience happens, or anything that we don't like happens, or we enter into a season of discomfort, we get so cast down, we have such despair, we are so distraught that we are not able to even move forward in our lives. There are moments, my brother and my sister, where your intellect can get you out of the situation, your network can get you out of the situation. Your family cannot get you out of the situation, but this small section of scripture teaches us something because the name Judah means praise. So what God is trying to tell us is sometimes you will find yourself in this situation that you can't get out of, that nobody can get you out of, but if you are willing to stand in the face of your problem and praise God, still praise God, even when things are going wrong, still praise him, God will take you out of the pit himself. Right? There are situ Look, we cannot be a generation that is so beaten down and so bothered when things don't go our way. Because let me tell you something. It is inevitable in this world that things will not go your way. Sometimes things don't work out. Can I get a hallelujah and an amen? It was not enthusiastic, but I'll get you there. Sometimes things don't work out. Sometimes jobs don't work out. We were on the Bible study, and I asked anyone, have they ever been fired from a job? I was the first to put up my hand, because I can remember when I was working in, you know, teenage years and whatever, whatever, I can remember being let go, being fired. And for those of you who are looking at me like, well, I've never been fired. I'm such a good worker. You are lying. And I'm here to expose you. Amen. You're lying. Because everybody here has been in a, a situation where they've been let go, where they've been cast off. And I was remembering in my mind, yeah, I've been fired. I've been in jobs that didn't work out. I've been in businesses that didn't work out. I've been in relationships that didn't work out. But thank God, it worked out with my wife. Amen. Hallelujah. And I don't care if you clap or not because I'm clapping for myself. But there are things that do not work out or they seem not to work out. And sometimes we get so distraught. We get so broken down. Oh, God, why did you do this to me? Why did you uh, uh, let me lose my job? Well, God let you lose your job because there's another one on the horizon. God, why did you let my business fail? Your business didn't make it because there's another one on the horizon. And I'm speaking from experience here because sometimes God needs to shake up your life. He needs to shake it up so that you'll realize there's something more that I need. I thought I was there, but I wasn't there completely. So God needs to shake things up so that he'll get your attention. He needs to shake things up. And sometimes the shaking is uncomfortable. And believe me, I'm talking from, sometimes the shaking is uncomfortable. But let me tell you something. There's a guarantee I can give you. You're going to learn from that experience, right? Everyone here has learned a lesson through an uncomfortable experience that they would not and could not have learned if somebody just told them. True or false? 
Why? Because we do not like to listen. As human beings, we don't like to listen. What we like to do is think we've got the answers. But let me tell you, the only place you're going to find the answer is in the Almighty God. And God is the purveyor of life. So God may release some aspect of life to you so that you will get an answer to a situation. And it, it, sometimes it is not easy. In fact, sometimes it is really, really difficult. But that's the answer you need to unlock your purpose and who you actually are. You need that answer. And so God is going to put you in a situation that forces you to come to grips, to come to grips with that answer. Some of the situations, God, God is not putting you in difficult situations because you're a bad person. And God is not putting you in a difficult situation because he hates you. God is putting you in a challenging situation because that's the situation that's needed to unlock the real you. Some of us are just blocking the real us from coming out. The real you is productive. The real you is successful. The real you is, is able to manage and deal with situations. And the devil has given a lot of people an imposter syndrome. Like, I can't deal with this. I don't have what it takes to deal with this. The world is too much. There are too many things going on. I'm afraid of what's happening. It's beyond my control. You don't have to control the world, but you do have to control yourself. You can manage yourself. You can manage how you respond respond to things, you can manage your own actions, and you can manage your life. You can manage your own life. And I think this is part of what the story of Joseph tells us, because the, the story of Joseph tells us that, okay, he's in this pit, and Judah, his brother, says, no, let's not kill him. Let's put him in the pit. And we heard Judah means praise. But there's something else that happens, too. He's in this pit, and a group of people come by, and these people are called Ishmaelites. And these Ishmaelites are actually distantly related to Joseph, because Joseph's grandfather, Abraham, had an illegitimate son, quote-unquote illegitimate son, named Ishmael. And these are the descendants of that Ishmael. And at the time that Ishmael was born, everybody was down on Abraham saying, Abraham, how could you do this? How could you make this terrible mistake? But at the end of the day, this mistake that Abraham made ended up saving the life of Joseph. And it tells me that God can allow your mistakes in one season to be your answer in another season. God can allow your shortfall in one season to be your correction in another season. Season. So you don't have to be so hard on yourself when you make a mistake. We've all made mistakes, right? <laughs> See, some people didn't even say yes. <laughs> and I know <laughs> those are the people deep in thought and contemplation. We've all made mistakes. I've made mistakes. You've made mistakes. We've made uh, choices that if we could go and turn back time, we would. I had a friend in two thousand and maybe like 2004 he he was a, a, com, a computer geek sorry computer nerd sorry computer smart guy amen and he was talking to me one day and he's like john i want to talk to you about something i'm like what is it he's like there's this stuff on computers like there's a way people will be using money on computers it's called current cryptocurrency and all this and i was like horace what are you talking about man like what are you talking about get your head out of the clouds and get a tangible job and get this. And that was what I told Horace. Later doing, uh, you know, 10, 15 years down the line, I run into a friend and he says to me, did you hear about Horace? And I was like, what? He's like, Horace made millions on cryptocurrency. And that's when I began to internally pray to the Almighty God. God, make me Michael J. Fox. Let me go back in time, back to the future. Let me go back and talk to Horace and steal his computer, my God. And let me be a crypto millionaire. But you know what? Sometimes we make mistakes. Amen? Amen? And I'm not the only one. And you're not the only one. But sometimes we don't have to harp on our mistakes because a mistake in one season will be your salvation in another season. Right? Sometimes, the, the, or the so-called mistake you thought you made. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have got involved in that, that business. I shouldn't have got involved. Look at, what I, look at what it cost me. Yeah, it may have cost you. Yeah, I've been there. It may have cost you. 
but you also gained knowledge. And let me tell you something. There is nothing that can beat a knowledgeable person. Nothing. If you know what you're doing, you will not be beat. And sometimes knowledge comes the easy way, and sometimes knowledge comes the hard way. But whatever way it comes, just make sure you get it, right? And so these Ishmaelites who were a problem in one season become saviors in another season, save Joseph. And they push Joseph into an environment that he had no knowledge about prior to him being there. The best Joseph could have hoped for on his father's farm was to lord over his brothers. But in the land of Egypt, Joseph is going to lord over a nation. And this is crucial because sometimes God needs to shake you up just to put you somewhere you wouldn't go voluntarily. There are some places you and I will not go voluntarily. Nobody wants to go to a courtroom voluntarily, right? But something you learn in this season may serve you in the next season. Nobody wants to deal with difficult people on purpose. But the difficult people you deal with in this season may help you overcome difficult people in the next season. And one thing I've noticed about God is that God will put you in a place that is beyond your regular environment so that you can learn something new, something powerful and impactful, and bring it back to bless your own people. This is the God we're serving. And this is what he did with Joseph. He brought Joseph into the land of Egypt, and Egypt is the most sophisticated culture at the time. And Joseph, within this culture, where he doesn't know the language, he's forced to learn it. He doesn't know the customs. He's forced to learn it. He doesn't know how things work. He's forced to learn it. And sometimes we don't know. We want to get, look, God wants to elevate us to certain levels. Some of us want to be real high in our professional careers, real high in our business careers, real high in our community careers. I want to tell you that the higher you go, the more intricate the rules are. You want to go to a high level in business? You've got to know the rules of getting there. You want to go to a high level in career? You have to know the rules of getting there. And the only way to learn those rules is to be exposed to them. So sometimes God puts you in a situation that you think you are not ready for because he needs to teach you. And this is what he does with Joseph. He puts him in Egypt. And Joseph forces himself to grow. He forces himself to learn. He forces himself to be elevated. And before he knows it, he is the number one guy in the house of an Egyptian noble called Potiphar. But there's something that we have to recognize, that elevation is attractive. Wherever you are, have you ever seen an ugly president of the United States before? Answer me. Have you? Yeah, I know. You say, Let me tell you something. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. Because I'll guarantee you one thing. Whatever their face looks like, whatever their hair looks like, whatever their tangerine tan looks like, they are desired because of their position. Right? Haven't you ever seen, you know, you see all these old, I saw Cher. Any, oh, my, I'm so old. My goodness. If I could turn back time. Okay. Anybody know Cher? Sonny and Cher? <laughs> I'm going to date myself. But it's okay. I saw Cher, who I think is around in her late 70s. She has a new boyfriend who is, like, in his late 20s. And oftentimes, you see, um, like, a guy in his 80s. Anybody remember Hugh Hefner? You said yes, and it worries me, because we all know what Hugh Hefner was about. Don't make me go under your mattress and search for magazines. But I remember Hugh Hefner in his 80s had uh, a, a wife or girlfriend who was like 19. And it, it, I was like, what, how, why? Why? And the answer came to me, it's position. People like status, and people are attracted to status. So if you have status, you are going to be attractive no matter what. 
So if you're sitting here and you feel you're ugly, just get status and everything will be okay. Amen? No, I'm not saying you're ugly. You look good. You look good. I like what you're wearing. Um, Joseph is actually good looking. And he also gets status. So that makes him attractive. And I know we're all like, God, elevate me because I'm ready. Elevate me. And God's like, you're not ready. And you're, you know, many of us are like, but God, I can do the job. I'm ready. And you may be able to do the job, but are you able to deal with what comes with it, right? Because when God elevates you to a certain level, by all means, it's going to draw attention to you. Even on a small scale, when we accomplish things, it draws attention to us. So imagine when God elevates you to a large scale, it draws attention to you. And it, and it draws attraction to you. And Potiphar's wife is attracted to this status that Joseph has. Plus, he's a great person looking and a wonderful personality. And all of a sudden, Potiphar's wife starts giving Joseph a different kind of greeting. You know when you just meet somebody and they're like, hey, Joseph, how are you? But it's different when it turns into, hey, Joseph. How are you? Go, oh, come on, Joseph, give me a hug. I don't need to hug you. Yo, man, step back. Step. But this is what's happening, right? And she's becoming more and more familiar with Joseph. And Joseph, you know, it's interesting because, like, he's put in a pit, and then he's taken out, and then he's elevated, and then Potiphar's wife comes at him, and Joseph resists. Joseph does the right thing. He resists. And I'm here to speak on behalf of all men. Resist in the face of temptation. Run. Oh, see? Okay. <laughs> all right, ladies, don't clap. <laughs> you didn't encourage us? Don't hate. Don't. Run. Joseph does the right thing in the face of temptation. Look, in the face of temptation, that is not the time to prove how big of a man you are and not how strong you are. And you know, I can stand. I've been a Christian for 15 years. I don't care what the devil puts it. When the temptation comes, Pastor John says, run. And that's what Joseph does. He's like, look, ma'am, I do not want this heat. I don't want this sauce. Bye. And he just runs. And she catches him in a moment alone. And she literally tries to force herself on him. And Jake, uh, Joseph runs. And the Bible says she, she held on to his, his cloak, his coat. But Joseph lets her take the coat because Joseph knows that he's serving a God who, if somebody takes something from you in one season, God can replace it in another season, right? He had this multicolored coat his brothers took, and when he landed in Potiphar's house, he was given another one. And if Potiphar's wife is going to take this one, Joseph knows that God will grant him another one. And I want everyone to understand that there may be some things you lost in a previous season, but you are serving a God who will return it in this season. See, this is the God we got to get. So Potiphar's wife is like lying about Joseph. And Potiphar sides with his wife because Potiphar does not want all that smoke in his house, man. I think in some ways I read this section, I, I feel like Potiphar knew his wife was lying, but he was like, uh, I'm going to side with my wife because I don't want the heat. And so Potiphar sides with his wife and sends Joseph to prison. And I believe that Joseph had to feel confused because he's like, I thought I was good, right? God, why are you teasing me? Why are you putting me on this sort of roller coaster ride? Like, God, why are you putting me on this roller coaster ride? So he's in prison, and I'm sure he's surely upset. But I think this section of Scripture gives us an important lesson, which is you cannot control your seasons. Just like you cannot control the weather outside, you cannot control the seasons of your life, but you can, you can control how you respond to them and how you equip yourself for them. If you know it's winter, you do not go outside in shorts and sandals. You go equipped for the weather. And I think many of us have to understand that when God puts a certain season in our lives, we have to be equipped for that season. 
We have to recognize it, see it, and be equipped for that season. And you may be in the middle of your dream, God's dream for you, and going through a season that feels like a nightmare. And your circumstances may make you question if you saw correctly. God, am I actually interpreting what you want for me correctly? And sometimes when things seem to go sideways, we begin to question, did we actually hear from God or are we making this up? Did we actually hear from God or are we making this up? And dreams can have seasons that feel like nightmares. And it's in those seasons and circumstances that God wants you to really, really, really trust him. To really, really trust him. See? The only way you're going to know um, your worth is when you go through difficult and challenging seasons. That's the only way you're going to know your worth. That's the only way you're going to know what you've got. That's the only way you're going to know the stuff inside. And I'm here to tell you, all of us have had like physical dreams, like we've slept and we've dreamed. And all of us have had physical nightmares too. And the truth about it is a nightmare doesn't end on its own. A nightmare ends when you wake up. And I want to tell everybody, 2023 is the year where you have to wake up. Amen? You got to wake up. We got to wake up and understand that God is actually trying to do something with our lives. We've got to wake up and understand that there is a purpose attached to your life. And every person that comes into your life, there is a reason that God brought them there. And we have to understand and find out that reason. And we have to live that purpose. We have to live that dream. And we have to allow it to be accomplished in our lives. And so I want you to really, really recognize in 2023 that this is your season to, to wake up, to rise up, to not tolerate average, to only be involved in excellence, to see yourself pushing things forward, to make decisions about your life that are in line with God's purpose and to live them out. And I'm here to reinforce and advocate the position that you do not have a second to waste. You and I do not have a second to waste because in 2023, God's purpose for your life is crying out to be accomplished. And the only question is, will you answer the call? Amen.